What's happening? YouTube Flash speaks back for another video. Um, we got some good games coming on tonight. WNBA. Um, two that stick out are the um, Chicago Sky versus the Las Vegas Aces. And as you all know, if you follow the channel, due to the fact that Philadelphia does not have a uh, WNBA franchise, I'm kind of somewhat rooting for the Chicago Sky by default. So I guess I'm somewhat of a Chicago Sky fan. Um, I like what they're building. I like the way it looks. Um, I believe in that sort of culture they're garnering there. And, um, you know, I'm kind of following Angel Reese and the whole thing. And I like uh, Kennedy Carter, my kind of player. So, somewhat of a uh, sky. Somewhat is my rooting interest here is I like to see a team come from the building, from the bottom, and build them up. I'm not going to, like, jump on the Aces, jump on New York, these teams that are already great. You know, I like to see something build. You know what I mean? Um, so, uh, at any rate, I'm scared tonight very very scared um i don't think they got a chance y'all chicago angel reese i think the double double streak might be in jeopardy too man now the thing that's good is i think she has a good relationship with asia wilson i think asia wilson you know looks at her like as a little sister you know, and I would like to see them get together in the offseason, man. That would be great. Get together with Adrian Wilson, man. Work on some post moves. Work on that jump shot. And Angel Reese could really, really, really be something, man, if she could get 70% of what Adrian Wilson has on offense because that woman, that lady is a beast. And um, I'm really concerned about when Adrian Reese has the ball, if – Asia Wilson is on her playing defense. We're talking about a two-time defensive player of the year, two-time MVP. Oh, God. She's 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 something special, man. Um, now, Kennedy Carter could have a good game, but then she's playing against Jackie Young. Oh, two-way demon. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Mm, I don't know who they got to match up with Plum and Mabry. Oh, God, she might get cook, 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 cook. Now, Cardosa might, now, I guess you got to say Cardosa and uh, Reese are their biggest advantage, maybe, but I don't know, because, like, his agent Wilson is in the post, God darn it. Yeah, it's, it's just bad. I just hope they just fight. It, it could be bad now that Chelsea Gray's back. Prior to that, maybe they would have had a better chance. Even I still can't pick them. Them damn aces, I will never vote against them. I done lost money already trying that. So, mm. but at any rate, man, this video is about um, uh, Cheryl Swoops, the uh, the great Hall of Fame basketball player who has been in the news a lot. Every time she's saying something, has always twisted his hate on Caitlin Clark and always all this kind of stuff. And I'm sure they'll try to find a way to twist what she says here. But she agrees with us. She agrees with us here. Fulan speaks. Um, when it comes to, and I'm, you know, don't like to pat myself on the back, but, you know, I like when Hall of Famers see basketball through the same lens that I see, you know, through a similar lens. And this is what happened here. You know, she's going to be asked about the fever. And um, she's reiterating much of what I've been saying to you guys. And um, I wanted to take a listen. And I'm going to chime in here. And, and by the way, uh, Cheryl Swoops, before we get to it, we're talking about a fourth time. This is the person they, that they're talking about that they believe is hating on Caitlin Clark. A uh, four-time WNBA champion. Uh, Three-time WNBA um, most valuable player. That is MVP. Six-time All-Star. Five-time All-WNBA uh, uh, first team. Two-time second team. Three-time defensive player of the year. So you're talking about a... A three-time MVP and a two-time and a three-time Defensive Player of the Year. She actually won Defensive Player of the Year and MVP in the same season. You know, in the NBA, I believe Michael Jordan is the only one to ever do that. Okay, 
Two-time defensive first team, and she's a two-time steals leader. Okay, that's what we're talking about. So I, I think she gets to say whatever the hell she wants to say about a rookie. I mean, that's just that's just me. But, you know, let's go. Um, Indiana sitting at that ninth spot. They're climbing. They had a <laughs> just the hardest schedule ever to kick off the season. So now that they're getting their groove and they've had practice, like I've said before, um, they're they're trending in the right direction, I think. Yeah, Jordan, and it, it helps when you're able to get some rest in practice. I know. It, it, it really does. And unfortunately, Indiana, they just kind of put them out there and said, all right, got the number one draft pick. Here you go. Well, Good everybody's luck. here, so you're going to play every other day. Good luck. <laughs> so, um, but you can you can see it, right? They mm-hmm. They look rested. They don't look as tired. But, but I also think one of the biggest differences for this Indiana Fever team, they're finally playing through Aaliyah Boston. Mm-hmm. Inside out. It looks great. And it's Thank you very much. I've been telling these people that's the change that they made. They're playing through Aaliyah Boston. Okay? Um, these are basketball eyes that are telling you that they were playing through Aaliyah Boston during, during, during the little winning streak, the four-game winning streak. It's they're playing through Aaliyah. Aaliyah is doing what Aaliyah does. She's also making the right reads, kicking the ball out when she needs to. And Alyssa and Aaliyah together are playing well. And they're doing this right now without Fag Binley. I know. I love her game. I love Fag Binley's game. That's going to only add to it when she comes back. Yeah. Yeah. Kelsey Mitchell has found her stroke. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we we were we talked about Angel. Uh, no no mention of Kelsey Mitchell just doesn't fit well with Caitlin. That's a problem. No, found a stroke. You know why? Because like she's been on a championship team that won four titles, right? And uh, she played with arguably the greatest women's basketball player of all time, Cynthia Cooper, who's the greatest I've seen. Her and Maya Moore, but they won in one A that I've seen in terms of guards. And. Um, you see, within a team concept, you can have a player going out and scoring on their own. Everything doesn't have to funnel through the point guard. You know, matter of fact, on that team, nobody even remembers who the point guard was, you know. In that game um, yesterday, Sunday, and, and just how dominant she was and how great it was to watch her double-double again. But I, I also want to say, Caitlin, to me right now, one of the best things she's doing is distributing the basketball, mm-hmm. like getting it to who it needs to get to, when it needs to get there. But also, early on, she would pass and she would just kind of stand mm-hmm. and wait for it to come back to her. Now she's passing the ball. She's getting rid of it. And she's actually like, she's moving without the basketball. Mm -hmm, They're mm -hmm. finding her, they're setting screens. She's able to come off the screen. And that to me is when she's deadly is when. Oh my God. Such hate. She hates Caitlin Clark so much. She's so jealous of Caitlin Clark. She said she's deadly when she's off the ball. No, Caitlin Clark has to be playing the Magic Johnson role. Always has the ball. No, I agree right here with the Hall of Famer 100%. She has to actually elevate her game, change it a little bit to succeed at the pro level. The way you played in college is the way you played in college. Now, at the pro level, you have to do what it is to thrive at the pro level. Very simple. And part of that is playing off the ball. Make it the more you can do on offense, the more difficult you are to slow down and to guard. The more you give the defensive scouting team, the more you give them to have to scout. And that's always an advantage. I don't know how many times I've been saying that. Thank you, Cheryl. She's able to come off a screen and just catch and shoot and not have to worry about I got to go create for everybody. Like she's finally finding her groove and getting into the pros, Mm -hmm. right? Like just getting out of the mindset of I had to do all of these things when I was at Iowa if we wanted to win. Mm -hmm. 
You don't. But no, you 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 gotta you gotta have Caitlin to get to take every shot. We need Caitlin with the ball in hands at all times. How dare we go two minutes without Caitlin touching the ball, though, Mrs. Mrs. Hall of Famer? You don't know basketball. You don't know. You're just jealous, Miss Hall of Famer. I have to do that now because you have some really good pieces around you. So to your point, no, Miss Hall of Famer, they all suck. I know Aaliyah Boston was was the number one pick. I know she is a rookie of the year, but no, she sucks. Only Caitlin Clark is good. I know Kelsey Mitchell can score nineteen a night or twenty a night, but no, I know she can score on her own. Key. But no, she doesn't work well with Caitlin. I just want her to be able to catch Caitlin's passes, okay, and then score. I'm going to ignore the fact that she's. 20 points. I'm just going to look at the fact she missed two passes. And that means she had a horrible game. And she doesn't pass it to Caitlin. I don't care if it was a three-pointer that she made. If she had passed it to Caitlin, I'd have been happy or Miss Hall of Famer. Indiana Fever team, they absolutely are trending in the right direction. And I don't know. Anything I, can happen. Anything can happen. And I I think they should be ecstatic to be on that bubble of the playoffs because, you know, if it comes down to it, which I hope, come on, script writers, give it to us. The <laughs> Chicago Sky, Indiana, playing for the bubble, the last playoff yeah. spot. Are you kidding yeah. me? Like, I didn't think we'd get this so soon, but I I would be here for it. That would be a lot of fun. But as we keep moving... Here you go. Two black women again just hating on Caitlin Clark. Oh, my God. They can't stop it. And by the way, there was another um, thing that's going around about Diana Taurasi. Um, They're saying that um, when Diana Taurasi was asked by a reporter um, about her upcoming game against Caitlin Clark. She said, Hi. they asked her, they asked Durant, Diane Taurasi been playing for over 20 years. You know, what's it going to be like to face Caitlin Clark for the first time? And she just said, oh yeah, it'll be fun, right? And now they're twisting that as shade. Oh yeah, it'll be fun. That's shade. Oh my God. Because they said Diane Taurasi made a look, had a look on her face and looked away. All right, l- listen to y'all, right? Diana Taurasi has been playing basketball for 20 years. Why? Oh, I- Someone asking her, what do you think it'll be like to face Caitlin Clark for the first time? Oh, God. Would that not offend you or annoy you? Shouldn't it be, what's it like for Caitlin Clark to face Diana Taurasi for the first time? Bees being that she's the rookie. Uh, but I digress. Um, you're right. It's all hate and everything. Anyone who disagrees with the idea that Caitlin Clark should have the ball all the time, make all the plays, get all the assists, get all the rebounds, get all the points as a hater. I got you. But anyway, man, that's what I got right now. Uh, tonight we'll be tuning in. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Tonight, I'm afraid for Angel. I got this feeling that she's going to get a welcome to the NBA moment. And then Tarasi, got, I mean, um, and then Caitlin got to face two. Who do she got to face? Four guards. Oh, man. Uh, first will be Diana, uh, First will be uh, Skylar Diggins and then Jewel Lloyd. Oh, my God. Well, she faced Jewel Lloyd already, and Jewel Lloyd dropped 32 on him. And then she will have to face uh, Dan Tarazi and Kalia Copper. That's coming up. My prediction is Dan Tarazi is going to punish the Fever. I believe that if it's one thing Dan Tarazi going to, she is going to punish the Fever. Okay, so we'll see. <laughs>